So this is the third tool wobble episode and I'm going to look at three different shaping tools that I use for compound curves and contoured surfaces. Uh, but first a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I once again I'm going to attempt to stick to a video schedule. That'll be Fridays 8pm Australian Daylight Saving Time for project videos and Tuesdays 8pm for talkie talkie videos. So whether that's a video wrap up or a review or tool wobbles. All right, so these are three tools that you've seen me use in a few projects. Most notably, all three of these were used in my sister's uh, rocking chair video. First up is a spoke shave. Now, spoke shaves are for finessing curves, things like that. This is a flat bottomed spoke shave, so it's really only good for outside curves rather than inside. This is a Stanley 151, which I happen to get from my father. Um, it was barely rusted, so I did restore it, painted it up uh, to talk off the rust. Now, the problem with most uh, Stanley spoke shaves is that they're actually pretty garbage. This is really no exception. Uh, and things don't lock down very well. It's got kind of a whitish mouth. The castings are poor, nothing's really machined, so it chatters a lot. Um, I mean, you can get nice shavings off it. but it's certainly not smooth. If I was to buy a new spoke shave, I certainly wouldn't buy this one. Uh, as I said, I got this for free, hand me down. Uh, I would look at either the Veritas or Lee Nielsen um, spoke shaves, or most likely I'd actually look at a H&T Gordon spoke shave. I've seen them at the wood shows and had a bit of a play with them, and they are very nice to hold. They're surprisingly weighty for the diminutive size, uh, but they just cut beautifully and because they're much smaller you can get them into much tighter curves for spokes on a wheel or a chair leg or whatever you're sculpting. Uh, the handles on this are just unpleasant to hold. It's not very ergonomic. Um, I mean it can be used push and pull. It's better than nothing I suppose but don't pay much if you're going to buy one of those. Get a second hand one or save up and get a good quality one. The second tool is uh, a Shinto saw rasp. I'll put a link in the description below for where I got it from and uh, Amazon affiliate link for those who are international. These are nuts. I would love it if these came in a half round or a foot rat's tail size, but these are amazing. Um, on one side it has coarse teeth and on the other fine teeth uh, and it just cuts so quickly because it's got the, well basically saw teeth, I'll have a close up and all the uh, gaps in between, the saw just, just falls away. So this is fantastic for very rough work and it just works so quickly. Um, it's, in a lot of cases it's actually probably faster than a spoke shave like that. The fine side is surprisingly fine and I would probably start sanding that surface at 120. Um, I mean it's, it's still not smooth but it works really well. These were not expensive, this was not expensive and I certainly would buy this again, it's a lot of fun. There is a second version of it which has a handle like that, but you have to then flip or take off the handle and re-bolt it on when you want to flip the side. So we found that this was probably the better choice. You can still hold it two-handed, you just gra grab the end like that. Works super well. Um, even if you're not sculpting stuff, uh, curved legs, whatever, can be really useful to round over a tenon if you're routing your tenon or uh, routing your mortise, sorry, or uh, using a drill press on your mortise rather than squaring up the mortise, you can round over the tenon. This is much quicker than a chisel. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend that. Last thing to look at is the McFarlane Bow Sander from House of Dunstan, which is only available as far as I know from their website, House of Dunstan. I picked this up at one of the woodworking shows, I think from Evan Dunstan. I'm terrible with names and with faces, so I'm, apologies if I get that wrong. So again, you've seen me use this. It is a sander that works a bit like a hacksaw, I guess. Um, it is contoured, or it is designed for contoured or compound uh, surfaces because you tension this up and you don't have a backing on the sandpaper as such, like you don't have a hard platen, it will follow those curves really well. It works surprisingly quickly. 
feels pretty good in hand looks gorgeous it's got some rock maple and some sort of queensland wood i think oh it looks a bit like hairy oak i'm not, not entirely certain it doesn't feel that heavy uh, the kit comes with four rolls of sandpaper they did have elastic bands on them uh, and as far as this tool goes that's my only complaint the elastic bands were not good quality so they degraded very quickly about six months um, but the same paper lasts pretty well and you can order more from their website. Although curved work isn't something I've done a lot of, particularly with mum's furniture, which is all square and flat, it is something that I do enjoy and will hopefully be getting more into. Uh, and the combination of these three tools works fantastic. And this is probably the most fun. Like the Shinto rasp is fun, but this is just fun to use because it makes sanding suck a lot less. <laughs> all right, to install the sandpaper, we've got Two wedges and a strip of sandpaper. You need to cut this to the length that you want for the tension that you want. There's instructions on their website should you purchase one. So it's clever in the way everything's held in. It's just with wedges. So put the sandpaper in, slide your wedge in. Then we need a clamp. I'm not quite sure what group this is. That I suppose that's my other complaint. The sandpaper doesn't necessarily have all the markings on the back um, some of them do that's just where they've been strip cut not the end of the world uh, so yeah you just need to bend this down to apply tension to it which is why you need the clamp on there to hold it in position unless you've got three hands now, I've not done this that often so uh, just because I haven't been able to use it on projects um, so I, I find it a bit awkward, though I'm sure should House of Dunstan see this, they will throw some pointers on how to actually use it. And then, as I said, it's sort of like a hacksaw. You can grab the two handles and just go back and forth. And that's already nice and smooth. So yeah, as I said, these are my three shaping tools for contoured surfaces, that sort of stuff. Um, definitely recommend the Shinto Rasp and the McFarlane Bow Sander. If you get a chance at any of the Australian wood shows, definitely give this a shot. It's a lot of fun. Um, this is, at the end of the day, just a rasp. So if you've got a nice set, probably don't need to worry about it. But if you're not quite ready to spend the money for a, what's it, Aru, uh, French hand-stitched, Rasp. These are pretty cheap, pretty fun. They work pretty well. As I said, just need one that's rounded. So if you've got any suggestions for inexpensive half round uh, rasps that work fairly well, let me know. I'm sort of looking at the microplane and what is it, rocket rasp, I think. Uh, but at this stage, don't need it just yet. So I haven't investigated too much further. Don't forget the new video schedule uh, Monday. Uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. Thanks for watching.